A former British government drugs advisor has warned that clinical trials to cure depression are being blocked by EU drug regulations. Professor David Nutt is calling for a change in rules so that research can begin into whether magic mushrooms could hold a cure for depression. But how exactly could this psychedelic drug, which is illegal in many countries, be used to treat depression? Well, more than 350 million people across the globe suffer from depression. That's according to the World Health Organization. According to Professor Nutt's research, psilocybin, the hallucinogenic ingredient in magic mushrooms, has the power to switch off a front part of the brain which is overactive in depression. But magic mushrooms and psilocybin are illegal in the UK, where it's been classified as a class A substance. That means it's seen as a most dangerous drug. Well. Professor David Nutt joins us now in the studio. He's president of the British Neuroscience Association and a professor at Imperial College London. Welcome to Al Jazeera. Thank you so much you. Uh, for joining us. So we've tried to explain in simple terms how this Br would Br work. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't written by me. It was uh, helped by a producer. But um, you're having trouble. You now have half a million pounds yeah. to go ahead with the trials. Explain to us what's stopping that from going on. The problem is that because this drug is called a controlled drug, need a special license to hold it, to manufacture it, to use it. These licenses cost quite a bit of money. They take a year to get. And I discovered that companies that I thought would be able to make the drug for me don't have the licenses. So that's delaying us by a long time and costing a lot of money. And that is because it's a class A drug and in that class is heroin, cocaine, no, ecstasy, no, those sorts. Paradoxically, heroin's easy to work with. I've worked with heroin <laughs> for 15 years, but psilocybin is seen as more dangerous than heroin in terms of the drug laws, which is ridiculous. So what steps would you take now? Well, it's very easy. Our government in the UK can simply say, we will move it from its, this class to the, the same class as heroin. That will make life completely straightforward for us. It could also be even more sensible and actually, you know, and, and say, well, we will, we will give people like me a, a license for free and we won't wait a year award these licenses. They could easily facilitate this by, by simple changes in regulations. Um, you were a drug czar advisor to the government and yeah. uh, you were effectively fired in 2009 yeah. because of controversial comments that yeah. you made where you said that LSD and ecstasy were actually less harmful yeah. than alcohol. So perhaps you've come up against this sort of, yeah. I don't know, I guess a barrier before yeah. in the sense that people are skeptical because magic mushrooms are, can be a very damaging drug. Well, I don't think magic mushrooms are damaging. There's no, no one's ever died of magic mushrooms and 8,000 people a year die of alcohol in this country. The, but I guess, I mean, again, it goes down to the LSD and ecstasy argument. I mean, it is still a class A drug. That's how it's yes. been classified. They are class A drugs. They shouldn't be class A drugs and they shouldn't be controlled the way they are because what we're doing is trying to stop young people using them and we're failing. But we are stopping scientists researching them, and therefore we're stopping the possibility of new treatments emerging. I guess there's two different issues here. One is whether you know, drugs like LSD or ecstasy, you know, whether classifying them as class A is a deterrent or not, and the other one is yes. uh, the scientific uh, research. Uh, have you tried, or are you in the process of talking to the Home Office here in the UK, the EU as well, because it's regulations? Yes. Have you felt uh, opposition from them? or I think there's a resistance to admit they were wrong in the first place. And there's also a resistance to change because governments don't like doing things that they don't want to do. But I think if there's enough pressure from patients and from other researchers, then they'll have to change because it is iniquitous that the therapeutic potential of these drugs cannot be properly evaluated. Uh, just very briefly, I mean, you're hoping for the trials to go ahead. Uh, yes. What impact could it have on the, the thousands, millions of people who suffer from depression? So about a quarter of people with depression don't get well. If this would help maybe just a quarter of those. It would have a huge impact throughout the world. Professor David Nutt, thank you so much for thank joining you. us.